Hey guys, what's up? My name is Gabe and this is Games with Gabe. This is the next episode in my Jade Engine devlog. So it's been a while since I released that first episode and I've been working on a few different things. Initially, what I did was I started this engine in TypeScript using Electron as the backend, which is basically the thing that Adam uses, which is an integrated development editor. And it allows you to use HTML, CSS, and JavaScript along with Node.js to deploy an actual application like an exe file or a dot out file or something like that and so initially i was using that but i started working with it more and more and i continued to work with it and i realized which i sort of knew from the beginning that i wanted to was originally going to switch to c plus plus and use OpenGL and actually have a real render and i'm probably going to use something like i am gui for the UI and everything. So I switched back to Java to start working on some other engine developments and I've started porting what I have in Java over to C++ and running into some issues there. So it's sort of all over the place right now, but I have implemented a few different things and I think I have learned a few different things. So I definitely want to show you guys what I've been up to in the TypeScript and then what I've been up to in Java and what my plans are for the engine coming up in the next few weeks as we go along with this. If you guys remember from that last video, I had this development environment inside of Node and TypeScript was the language I was using and I was compiling that and everything. And this is sort of just like using Electron. And I did add quite a bit of other features and stuff. So as you can see, I have the grid and I started working on binding variables and stuff. So I also changed up the UI a bit too, which you can see in here. But like if I change the grid width and the grid height in here, you can see it immediately affects the background out here. And that was some of the things that I was starting to work on. I didn't actually implement clicking onto these and dragging them in yet. That was gonna be my next step, but I had all the technology in place to do so with the binding of variables, as you could see with that. And that was sort of my test run just to see if it worked. And then I also have this, I think I showed you guys this before, but basically you can just import sprites. As you can see, I definitely, changed up the UI quite a bit and I really like the way the UI turned out but unfortunately this probably won't be able to carry over into my next phase. I might be able to change the styles because I am GUI is pretty flexible but really like this and I want to stick with this except for this part. Don't know what to do about that but you can import sprite sheets and stuff and it would just create them over here and add a new sprite sheet to the list and then we've also got this new project window which I think I also showed you guys changed up the UI a bit once again and then you can also open a project so I have another project just located in here and this is called test and I can open it up here and as you can see it's just flipping out right now <laughs> so <laughs> I didn't fix all the bugs as you can see because I just never got to it and now it's switched over to that new project but if we go into this startup.prj, which contains all the information telling me which project I was last in, the project name and all that, if I delete this, it opens up a new project window and everything. So I made this logo, I really like it. And you have this where you can open an existing project or you could start a new project. And I just think it's really cool. And then if you start a new project, it opens it up and it gets you into all this stuff. And I just, I really like the way this was turning out. But like I said, I decided to transition back to Java because it's going to be easier in the long run uh, once I port everything to C++. And I am porting everything to C++ as well. So I continue development in Java, expanding upon my basis for Jade Engine, which is sort of what we have in the Geometry Dash series. And as you can see here, I'm starting to add physics. This is a buoyancy particle. And this is a spring force. So if I do that, it expands it. And then if I pull it back, it starts, it contracts, it goes back. And then I can go up here and this has gravity affecting it and everything. And what I'm using for this is this uh, book called Game Physics Engine Development by Ian Millington. This is the second edition. Um, there's some things that I really like about this book and some things that I really, really don't like. One of the things that I like, for instance, is he does take you through quite in depth about what he's doing and everything. He explains it all. 
one of the things that I really, really despise is that he doesn't allow you to test it easily. There's not a lot of places in his book where you test. So you write hundreds of lines of code. You're like, I don't even know if this is going to work properly. And then he's like, oh, but you can't really test this either. And once you get to the end of the chapter, he's like, you have to read two or three more chapters until you can actually test this. And I really don't like that. But some interesting things about this. This is a mass aggregate physics engine is what he calls it. And basically the way it works is you have a bunch of particles that comprise of these objects, as you saw in that. And that's sort of what um, things like GISH, if you've ever seen it, that's sort of the, the way they implement their physics and everything. And World of Goo would be another example. I'm like 90% sure they use something similar to this. But I'm going to be moving on to full body, like rigid body physics and stuff, which I'm looking forward to because... It's the whole reason that I did start doing this. Um, so if I go into my level editor scene, though, in here, you can see that it's pretty easy to use. So I just have two particles. Um, I give them a mass. This one has a mass of 100. This one has a mass of 10. And this is the particle that's floating. And then for I have this thing called the particle registry, which is in charge of updating and all that stuff, which is really nice because then you can literally just say particle registry, update all the forces. And then you just update the particles and everything works out as planned. And then what you can do is you can register new forces. So like right here, I have adding an anchored spring to my particle two. And then right here, I have gravity added to my particle and I add drag to the particle. And then for the floating particle, I add in a buoyancy, a buoyancy force generator and then I add in a gravity force generator and a drag force generator and so like if I take away the drag from my spring particle you'll see the effects almost immediately um, it oscillates forever which is exactly how a particle in real life would act and it's really cool so like if I grab this and then go from up here you can see that it starts oscillating pretty wildly and I don't know I think it's just interesting working with this stuff and everything and hopefully i'll have a fully fleshed physics engine next time i'm working on it and it's getting closer but as you can see still not quite there so that's where jade is right now in the future what i want to do is definitely expand upon this i have a fully featured physics engine i also want to fully move this to c my development environment and everything i'm getting closer on that front too i've started building a render and everything and it's getting there it's just really annoying because i'm not very familiar with c and there's a lot of esoteric errors and stuff that i'm not familiar with compared to environments like this memory issues and stuff like that so slowly but surely working my way through that and hopefully i'll be there pretty soon okay i hope you guys liked this if you did please hit like and subscribe and i will see you in the next episode thanks guys see you